thanks for coming. This is my first real event, uh, which is really exciting and a, a tiny bit overwhelming, I think, for, um, for not having been in a real space with people. Um, it's really nice to actually kind of feel humanness, though. I just got to the point yesterday, I think, where I was doing a staff meeting for Watershed in Zoom, and I just was like, someone say something! <laughs> like, no feedback is difficult. I'm Claire, hi. I'm the CEO of Watershed. Um, I'm really, really bloody happy to be here tonight for the launch of With You. Um, Watershed was part of funding this project through um, a theme that we called Expanded Performance, which was funded by Bristol and Bath Creative R&D. That's a collaboration. I just had this panic that I didn't know who it was a collaboration. <laughs> it's a collaboration between Watershed, University of Bath, University of Bristol, University of the West of England and Bath Spa. Um, and it's about, oh, thanks, <laughs> I did it. Um, and it's um, about bringing academics and creatives together and really trying to support the cluster of amazing work that goes across our two cities. And we decided to fund a load of work under the theme Expanded Performance because we were excited to think about what Technologies was doing in the field of performance. And we were particularly excited to think about how the theatre sector and the music sector, which are really big pillars of the cultural life in our cities, um, don't really talk to each other about innovation. Often both are doing really exciting things, but there isn't as much crossover as there might be. Um, we also really wanted to think about liveness and togetherness. And expanded performance was thought about before COVID, but it turns out we were bang on the money to think about how digital technologies enable a conversation and an exploration of liveness and togetherness. And um, with you, I can safely say, is kind of exactly the opposite of any of the projects that we thought we would fund. Um, I don't think if anyone had described with you at the beginning of all of this, it would have been something that we would have recognized as performance. But the way that we funded work was that we funded a whole set of fellowships, and then we funded a, some prototypes. And the fellowships helped us unpack and dismantle what we understood about performance, liveness, togetherness. And so, of course, with you, it turns out, is the very best example of expanded performance and how performance takes place and moments of togetherness are made in unusual, important, and, um, and life-changing ways when you use digital technology. So, oh, I just had a shiver. <laughs> um, I'm really happy to be playing, pressing play on a video that's going to show you all about the actual project and then the team are going to get up and talk a little bit more about it um, and then I hope you've had a chance to have a go but I'm sure you'll get a chance afterwards. Um, so thanks for coming. Um, we're really, really proud to have supported this project which is already changing lives all over the UK. So let's hope there's more. An old friend of mine had COVID, was on ICU and was mechanically ventilated and wasn't able to have visitors. And so his friends and family were trying to pull together voice messages from his network and put them on one MP3 and send that to the hospital. And they found that whole procedure very challenging. It made me realise that there's so many people who are in hospital or in care homes unable to use devices due to their condition. And all you want at a time like that is either as a friend from the outsiders to be able to send them a message and make sure that they have company. Um, and if you're in a very difficult time um, in hospital, then it makes a real difference to be able to hear your loved one's voice. That's what gave me the idea for With You. The thing that we found during COVID was that families were just isolated from each other overnight. And if you imagine what it's like to be in hospital when you're really poorly, you may not be able to talk very well, you can't concentrate. Being able to just hear over and over again um, messages from your loved ones is very important. So we found it fantastic. It's, really, it's a gift, and I keep saying it's a gift. It's a lovely, lovely thing. So we're very much at the early stages at the moment. We've implemented in Neuro ICU, and so people are very poorly there neurologically. And we're going to um, trial for a couple of months and then move out to our other ICUs across the trust. We've made With You super easy to use. 
simply go on to withyou.org.uk and create an account. Click on create a new playlist. Go through the process of signing in and creating an account and then verify your account in the email. Create a recipient, that's the person that you want to receive the message, and then record a message. You can review it and save. Save and submit, and then you can upload a song. You can also invite friends and family to start recording messages and sending them in. With the messages and the music on the playlist, you can click review and then send. Wherever you are in the world, it doesn't matter where you are, you can leave a lovely message for your dad or your sister or your brother or your friend. And it means that it's like for that patient, they've got you next to them. And it doesn't get better than that, really. It's lovely. With You has proven to be impactful on COVID wards and in care homes. However, we've realised that our trusts and care homes are facing these issues all of the time. This digital service goes some way towards helping people feel less alone in their time of need. Natalie gets the slide up. Um, we're just going to introduce ourselves. So hi, I'm Angie. I'm Joint CEO and Artistic Director of Trigger. Um, I've got long brown hair. I'm wearing a cream cardigan, striped skirt. I'm standing on a lec next to a lectern. Um, and I'll, oh, and my pronouns are she and her. And this is Natalie. Hi everyone, I'm Natalie, I'm the other co-director of Trigger with Angie. Um, so we are Trigger, we make um, outdoor site-specific um, performance and theatre, um, and just last month this is The Hatchling. Um, we premiered this beautiful dragon in Plymouth, um, and she um, hatched from an egg in the middle of the city. Um, she was bigger than the size of a car, um, baby dragon, which roamed the streets of Plymouth, and on the Sunday she grew full size to um, uh, the adult walking dragon, which is just a bit bigger than a double-decker bus. And then on Sunday evening, she metamorphosized into an uh, incredible, spectacular flying dragon with a 20-meter wingspan. And that took off over um, the sea and lifted off over the coast and flew into the distance and disappeared to an incredible light and sound show with over 30,000 live audience um, experiencing it. Um, we are also making With You, which we'll talk about in a minute, and um, we're making an incredible work of scale, um, which will be closing the Commonwealth Games um, next year in 2022, so keep an eye out for that. Um, so With You, um, we, the video's just done a really good job of explaining what it is, um, and I guess just to add to that, we wanted to just say that um, we know that there's a very real need for a service like this, um, it's something which we were triggered by COVID to come up with it. You know, um, patients were isolated in hospitals and we felt like we could create something seamless that would, um, yeah, put everything into one digital playlist that we could then send out really easily to patients at their bedsides. Um, and there are only two, there are no competitors in the market. There are only two um, services which are trying to do the same, um, which are a bit um, so one's called Keep in Touch and one's called um, Staying in Touch and that's in Leicester and Hertfordshire and it's effectively inviting friends and loved ones to fill out an online form, leave a message, um, send a picture and that requires the nurses, the ward staff to effectively um, print out and then hand deliver to the patients in their bedsides. And that obviously requires time, takes resource, um, and it's very demanding on the trust, on, on the wards themselves. Thanks. Um, this, yeah, so we started this service thinking about people who wouldn't be able to connect to people in hospitals. And as, oops, 
And as we've been developing it, we've been developing it with um, Pete from Nine Night, who is here today. He's created a really simple user um, experience. So you can now, as it said on the video, go on, sign up. It's absolutely free. A bit like Trainline, you can set up a, a simple account. <laughs> and then you can invite your friends and family. You can see all your tracks as they come in, a bit like on iTunes. And um, with uh, this funding, we've been able to splice in your favorite music. And so what we've been really looking to do is to move this from a really functional service to a really creative, curated um, audio track. So we worked with Amy Rose, who um, is uh, director of Anagram, who are a digital uh, theatre company who are based uh, at PM Studio as well. And she did a lot of work on working on the language and how we invite you to leave a message. So the Patients Family Network really do leave a message of an anecdote, a poem, a memory, a, a real message of quality. Um, so in that way, we, we're trying to make a beautiful audio um, experience. This is where we are now. So where we are now, um, thanks to the expanded performance um, opportunity, we now have a really brilliant um, working prototype which is up and running in five different, um, four different NHS trusts and one care home. So we've partnered with Oxford University Hospitals, who's here tonight, um, North Bristol, Airedale and Whittington. Um, and we are also with um, Abbey Care. Abbeyfield Care Home, um, so they're a national network of care homes who are looking to scale out with us. Um, and we are across 16 different wards, and we've also got growing interest with 10 new partnerships that we're building across the UK. Um, and I'll talk more about scalability because it's something we're on the cusp of doing. So this, this funding and this opportunity is kind of bookended where we are now in terms of phase two is what we've been calling it. And I think we need to go into a phase three and, and we'll talk more about that opportunity and, and hopefully talk to everyone here this evening over a glass of wine. So, um, as we said, this has been triggered by COVID, this whole um, service. But what we've learned is that there's much more need for this than we realised. So, for example, we had started working with Royal Orthopaedic um, Hospital in London. So they look after people with spinal injuries. So they're based in London. Someone might have had an accident and they might live in Doncaster, for example. They'll be sent to London and have an operation and they can be in recovery for about three months. So obviously in that time, there'll be lots of time when they're on their own and they will not be able to have visitors from different networks. Um, equally, we've learned more about care homes. So as Natalie said, we've got our first care home. That's a really new experience for us. Um, and I think there's all sorts of considerations we have to deal with. But one thing that we're learning is even out with COVID, if you're in a care home, you might get a visitor, if you're lucky, every day, maybe once a week. But that visitor is probably someone very, very close to you. But what happens to your extended network when you're old? Do you suddenly stop seeing all the people that you used to? Um, so this really uh, opens up the opportunity to hear from your grandchildren who might be in Australia or all over the country um, on a regular basis. And you can com um, continually update your, your audio track service. And what we've heard from the people we've been working with is that people do really like to listen to these time and time again. The other thing that was a real surprise for us is um, as well as the print out and send messages to the ward services that a lot of trusts provide, there's quite a lot of video messaging, sorry, um, like Zoom, that you might have going on. So this, this really works well if somebody's sitting up, they can use a digital service, they can be part of that um, interplay. But where it becomes really difficult is nurses um, explain to us, if they set up a video call with a family who are about to see somebody who might have tubes and equipment and they'll be unconscious, they spend a, and they have to, first of all, prepare the family for what they're about to see. And then they have to support the family as they're coming. You know, it's quite a shock to see a loved one there, especially when you can't speak to them. And often what happens then is that the nurse is reassuring the family and the patient gets left and doesn't actually ever get a quality message because it's quite awkward to then cut through and try and speak to your loved one when you're dealing with all of that. So when we talk about saving time, that's sort of what we mean. The nurses were felt they, they, they've got such a guilty burden because they've got so much to do. And then leaving people who are in really challenging situations with nothing um, gives them, leaving them with this has, has really alleviated a lot of that. 
And I, I mentioned as well the, the quality of, of experience and the breadth of the network that you, you're open to. So if um, you can imagine if you had someone in ICU who was in your work network, you might not feel that you can send a message. But in this service, it's sort of open to your whole Facebook network. You could be getting colleagues, old friends, people you might not um, think would usually contact you in that circumstance. So next steps for us now that um, we're kind of at the end of this phase of development. Um, one is scalability and the second is accessibility. So for scalability, um, one of those 10 new relationships that we're building is with Lewish, Lewisham and Greenwich. And they want to roll it out to 30 wards simultaneously, which is really exciting. But currently the service, how we're operating is that we're asking a trust to set up a designated mailbox, so one email inbox to go out. And we think there's potential there for us to do that better, more seamlessly, more efficiently. Um, we can absolutely do it now, but I think there's, there's a real opportunity there for us to be scaling out on a much bigger scale. And then the second is on accessibility. So there's two things within that. There's our website, so um, how that um, reads to people with different accessibility needs. Um, sight loss, so larger text, contrasting colours, and then also um, in care home settings, if you are a client in a care home and you have hearing loss, and um, it would be brilliant if we can create this service so that it's accessible for people who have hearing loss, so how can we integrate it into hearing loops, for example? So they're two of the big things that we really want to explore going forwards. Um, and just to, just to talk about how we've developed this, it's really been through personal networks to start with. So right at the beginning, I was speaking to my neighbor's son, for instance, in the NHS and saying, do you think this would be um, useful or is this gonna be a hindrance? So we'd started very, very much like that. And as we've started growing to more and more trusts, it really is word of mouth. So I just wanted to use this opportunity to say, if you're in a trust or you have somebody or, or a contact in a hospital or a care home, this is free. Um, and we'd be really delighted to, to meet any new partners. We've had some um, comments coming in about how this is impacting people, and we just wanted to share a couple of quotes with you that really exemplify the impact it's having. So this one says, this came in last week, I think, amazing. She sees it as a gift that she can still speak to her dad. He's awake, but he can't sleep, speak, and she can't come in. He smiles and nods as the messages come through. She says she feels much more part of what he's going through. Um, this one's from a nurse's experience. So um, the, pace, the patient I played it to today was intubated and unconscious, but occasionally tries to move or has erratic heartbeats. When I played the messages, she was visibly calm and settled. The nurses were all very excited about the fact that we could play the messages from family members. Just thought you should know your technology is having a very real and tangible effect on patients. So I guess just to round off, um, we'd really, I guess our ask to everyone this evening is, um, we know that there's um, a couple of people here from um, the trust that we're working with, and um, also, uh, yeah, people who are from the Southwest, and just picking up on what Angie was saying about, um, you know, everyone we've partnered with is through word of mouth, and the health sector is absolutely massive, and our ask to you is, um, yeah, to come talk to us about the trust, if you have any um, ideas or anyone that you can connect us to, we'd love to speak to you about it. Um, and also care homes, we're, that is a market that we are absolutely trying to get in, so we would love to speak to you more about that. And when we say market, I should add that we're a charity, <laughs> and that we, um, I guess we're just talking about absolute reach, and this is, mm. is free to everybody, um, both, both sides of the network. Um, so we want to uh, open it out to any questions, and we're always open for feedback. Um, and also Pete's kindly said that he would be up for um, answering any questions because he's been doing, as I said, all of the work on the development side, um, along with Crash Tech, a guy called Rich, who can't be with us today. Hi everyone, I'm Becca, I'm the producer on with you. I've got short blonde hair and I'm wearing a like extraordinary weird shirt today. <laughs> um, uh, we've quickly got a moment. Uh, we have Emily here, which we're really lucky that she's come all the way from Oxford. She's gonna talk to us quickly about 
How With You is going down in Oxford University Hospital Trust. So, Emily, can I just introduce you to the stage? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, my name is Emily Hurdley, and I'm the Patient Engagement and Inclusion Lead at Oxford University Hospital Trust. So we have with you, and we are trialling it in neuro ICU at the moment. We're very early days. I believe we're about three weeks in kind of with everything up and running and working. Um, and within my team and patient experience, we are working with the family liaison nurse in ICU just to initially obviously get everything off the ground and get all the technology set up. But then just that initial feedback with her, we meet weekly to just discuss to make sure that it's kind of having the impact that it should be um, and I mean Becca's in on those calls and the feedback has just been incredible just being able to match families and keep families together and I mean we've had examples of families that are all over the country that have felt so lost and feel so helpless that they have relatives that are really really poorly that they can actually feel like they can they can speak to and they can connect with and they can contact in ways that they wouldn't have been able to pre-COVID and kind of post-COVID just by the by the issue of, of travel or being in a different country or being too far away or other family commitments. And I think one, one, um, one big piece of feedback that really sticks in my mind was a, 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 a daughter, her father was quite poorly and she um, was fortunate enough to be able to visit him and she was coming into the hospital. And, but it was exhausting because she was the only person that could go in. So she was, obviously, that was a lot on her and that was a lot of, um, a lot of time and an emotional kind of energy for her and to be able to actually then take with you to her other family members and her siblings not only in the country but in other countries and her aunts and her uncles and just to feel like when if she couldn't get there or felt like she could only stay for a little bit of time that actually she could then leave her father with other messages and other um pictures and and songs and things from other people that she didn't even know about she said there were stories that she hadn't heard about or that things that she didn't know so I think it it just shows it's just, it's just been incredible, and I mean, the people that it's currently reaching are very, very poorly, and we're looking forward to obviously continuing to trial it and see, see where it goes, and um, we're going to work with our kind of psychologists and our, our families and our nurses just to really, really understand the impact, but I mean, up, uh, yeah, as it is at the moment, it's, it's, it's having a really positive impact. So yeah, thank you. So we're just going to have a moment for Q&A. So if anyone's got any burning questions, we've got Angie and Natalie. Do you mind coming back up? And also, as we mentioned, we've got Pete over there who can talk about technical things. I'm going to walk around with a really long, roving mic that is very COVID-friendly. Um, so if you have any questions, please do kind of raise your hand, and I'll come over and hold the mic up. overloaded you with quite a lot of information so I really don't mind if there aren't any questions <laughs> but it would be great also to if you, there's any feedback or anything that anyone's thinking that we haven't thought of I'm always up for that. Juliet. Oh you have to wait for Becca. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Do you want to go? Yeah. You need to do. You do the first one. I'll do the second one. I'll just do it in a minute. <laughs> so the um, so your um, first question. Um, yes. So there's a key contact that's nominated. So um, if um, Andrew was to go into hospital, I I could volunteer to be the key contact, and I would be the person that would create an account and be the kind of the account holder. Um, so I'd create the account, which hopefully some of you have left a message over there, and I'd be the kind of the key account holder that can see all of those messages coming in. So I would come to you, Juliet, and say, oh, your friends of Angie, leave a message. Um, so you can hear your own message back, but then I can hear all of the ones that have been collated. And the idea of the key contact, so my role is to kind of 
move all of the different tracks around and the images to make sure they're in the, uh, uh, the right order. And we built it in that way to make sure that, um, so that key contact is responsible for making sure that those messages are um, sensitive and kind and lovely and um, hopefully not offensive. And that, that person is kind of, I guess, the, the, the bar not the barrier, the person who's kind of flushing out, making sure that the moderator, yeah, making, thank you. Um, making sure that all of those messages are um, really kind and lovely. And then um, the answer to your second question, how that happens, how it's delivered in trust, it varies between the trusts, but um, for example, in Airedale, there is a specific device um, on that ward, so they have iPads, so those iPads are used specifically on that ICU ward, and then there are disposable headphones that go, well, this was in COVID times. But anyway, they have um, headphones, so they're plugged in and ready to go. And the way that the um, ward receives them is that they just they get um, an email in the inbox that's the generic um, inbox that's been set up for with you. So it will be with you at airedale.co.nhs. Um, and then you literally click the link and click play. And the nurse will then plug the headphones into the patient's ears, click play, and then that can just be left playing for an hour. Um, so the idea then as the nurse, you literally click play and you can go away and go and tend to the other patients. So it's really light touch and doesn't require any um, kind of any major um, labor for the staff team there. Yeah, and just to add a couple of technical additions, which is, so if you're a trust who's interested, all you need is a device that's connected to the internet. So that can be a phone, a tablet, um, and the other thing is it's not an app, so you don't have to download anything. You just have, need an email on there. And you're not downloading files, so you're not going to end up with something that's got stocked full of um, sound. It's just a, a link. So if you're a moderator and you've created a lovely track and you do want to share it with more people, you will be able to use that URL. So it also means that if, um, if any of you, I hope it doesn't happen to you, but anyway, need this, you can actually just create a, uh, a track um, an, an album, and you can send. You can take the web link and, and get it sent to anywhere you need to. So you, tomorrow you could make one for for a friend. Or the, the technology still works. And I think uh, we've also talked a bit, haven't we, Pete, about the idea that you could even reskin this and make it for a completely different market. And say, do people want to make digital mi mixtapes um, for your mates for birthdays and, and family? Because the tech that Pete and um, Lime Night and Crash Tech have, have sewn together means that that's possible. Luke? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's, very, it's interesting to hear you talk about the possible other uses of it in digital mixtapes. I wonder like, what, you, what your approach to streaming rights and copyright clearance is, because you're, you're on the verge of a streaming service, right? Like, so what's the, how are you approaching that? And, Thank you, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> so we um, brought on some brilliant lawyers, and we talked about that. And they said, in this instance, because it's going directly to one patient at a time, we wouldn't be infringing any copyright. And her exact words were, if anyone sues you for it, that would simply be unethical. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is a really good point. Uh, thank you. And we will <laughs> talk to you after the break. <laughs> Um, we have talked. Um, we have talked with Spotify actually about how we might be able to do this. Mm. Um, that you would need a Spotify Pro account on the Spotify end. Um, I mean, on the on the receiving end. So we decided not to go that way with this because we didn't want an extra barrier. But it is a potential. But we're also aware that I won't say any names of any brands, and that's not one that I'm talking about, but once something's working well, it can often get quickly replicated, so we're also a bit nervous about spending a lot of time and investment on that. I um, just say, I think it's wonderful, and it's lovely to be here. Um, and it's lovely to be at the washhead as well. This is my first meeting. I've been to it. It's amazing. Thank you. The question is quite on the finances. Um, you're a charity, and you don't need to or want to make money. But are there 
cost to you going forward and how would you manage that even as a charity? So this is a really fundable project. We found, so we, we started this at Pace because we saw there was a direct need, so we put our own reserves into the first iteration of it. Um, and then we were able to, to secure phase one and now phase two. Um, I think there could be a small subscription cost that we would need to put on it if the storage costs and the, and the admin costs meant that we wanted it to tick over after we get into full iteration. But I th mm. our motivation is not profit. Um, mm. But we, we could look at putting a, a charge there and we were sort of sounding out trusts about how that would feel. We wouldn't want anyone to feel that they couldn't use the service because that's not what it's all about. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have drinks. Yeah. Um, yeah, and have a go at the service. Yes. yes. Uh, if you, if, if you want to record a message. So, yeah, if anyone's left a message, they will have all been compiled magically onto one playlist, and Bethlin over there will help you listen to that track. So, um, yeah, head over there and have a listen to what everyone's um, been leaving in the pre-talk. Oh, and thank you to Becca, who's producing with you, and to Bethlin, who's working on it as well, who we haven't mentioned.